glad to have you here. It's an honor to be interviewed and like to show you around here as we walk around campus and hear what you have to say. Most definitely. I just want to say I'm excited to be talking with you, but I'm also a little nervous as well. <laughs> not to be nervous, not to be nervous. Okay, good. So, that makes me feel better. <laughs> come on up. Just to give you some background on why I chose Santa Clara, it's because of the great academics and the prestigiousness that it holds. Also the location it, with it being in the Silicon Valley with all the connections that you can make here. And also, of course, because of the weather, with me coming from the cold Midwest, it feels good not having to put a coat on every day. What are some reasons why you love Santa Clara? Well, we'll just go in and we'll yeah. talk about okay. it right now. So come on in. Thank you. So come on in and have a seat over here. I don't have that many students come in to visit, so uh, you're kind of a, you're a guest of honor. You're, that makes me feel really special. Oh, well, you are really special. You're, <laughs> the, you're the star right now. Nah, nah. So I was working in Southern California for over 21 years at another university. When I heard there was an opening at Santa Clara, I got to thinking about what it would be like to be at a university that had a great reputation, had great academics, and where they took social justice and concern for the world very seriously. So. I'm born and raised in LA, my family's in LA, but the opportunity up here was too much to pass up. So I chose to make my application, I went up against the other applicants, and then was chosen for the position, and that's now six years ago. So this is like a second home for me. That's great to hear. So it was a perfect opportunity for you and your family. It was a great opportunity. Great, well, not, a, not a perfect opportunity for my mother, but it's a great opportunity for me, and uh, everybody else is on board. So, but mom would still like me back at home. Okay, well I'm glad to hear that. I'm sure your mom must feel the same way about you back in Aurora. Oh yeah, she, she's doing all right. She gets a little sad from time to time for me being far away, but she'll be all right. She gives me a lot of calls throughout the week. So you say uh, you're from LA, so let me dive into my next question. And that's with me growing up in Chicago, and with you growing up in LA, I know there's a rival between the Bulls and the Lakers. I'm a big Michael Jordan fan, and I'm sure you might be a Magic Johnson fan. Which one would you choose if you had to choose between the two, and why? That's not even a question for me. <laughs> I would choose the Lakers. <laughs> yeah. And mean, Magic Johnson, he's the man. Yeah, he is the man, but I didn't, you know, people say Michael Jordan is the best player of all time, so I figured, you know, you might. I'm sure he's a great player, but, you know, I got hometown loyalties. Actually, I followed baseball more than I followed basketball. Mm -hmm. Dodgers fan? Dodgers fan. Followed the, the Dodgers for a long time. That's great. Long time. You look on the shelf, you'll see a baseball card from Sandy Koufax. You'll see some other things there that are little Dodger memorabilia. Kind of reminds me about my hometown. I'm glad to see that you're a true fan. <laughs> yeah. The conference is starting earlier than usual this year. so. I wanted to pick out this question and ask you, are there any one or two teams in particular that you want us to beat this year in our conference? So I really two. want you to knock off St. Mary's. Okay. That's extremely important. Okay. That'd be a really good start to the season. Yep. So that would be good for all of us, mm -hmm. good for school spirit. Yep. And then you can get all warmed up to knock off Gonzaga after that. Okay. <laughs> That's what I thought I was going to hear. Yep. <laughs> You're going to hear St. Mary's and Gonzaga. That's St. Mary's and Gonzaga. Do. Who do you think is going to be the toughest one to play this year? This year? I'm gonna have to say the toughest team will probably be Gonzaga. Gonzaga. Yep, they uh, they started off strong as a, as a team, and uh -huh. they've beaten some pretty big teams in non-conference play. Are they really? Yep. Already, so uh, yeah. that's probably the toughest team we're looking at, but right. it'll always be a great challenge, just like it is every year to yeah. go up against them. Well, it's kind of like when SC plays Notre Dame in football; you never quite know what's going to happen. Exactly. You exactly. Know? And sometimes we can just upset Gonzaga, and mm -hmm. they're just totally surprised. That's very true. So, uh, Father Ng, I also wanted to ask you. Uh, I know I have a coach. I have two coaches in my life. Mm -hmm. uh, my basketball coach who was Coach Keaton. Mm -hmm. And then I want to say my other coach would be God because that's what my mom always preaches to me. Yep. You got a smart mom. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to ask you, who are your coaches in life? Mm -hmm. It could be one or two. You'll find out the longer you live, the more coaches you get. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So early on, I come from a family like what you have. Mm -hmm. My mom, my dad, mm -hmm. the coach was always what's the role of Jesus in your life, yep, exactly. okay? So that became very real for me. Mm -hmm. When I got to college, I had a great teacher in the history department, okay. and then there were others afterwards. When I first came here to Santa Clara as president, 
My predecessor, Father Locatelli, mm -hmm. he was a great coach. Here's how you do things, here's people you should meet. That's interesting to hear. Well, hopefully through my life, I'll gain more coaches throughout my you, journey. You will. And I'll be able to come back and tell you that one day. I'll look forward to that. Sounds good. So, Father, we're here at the Mission Church. And this is the only mission that's on a college campus, that's, okay, that's in the whole state of California. Mm -hmm. So this, is, uh, this goes back over 200 years. So let's go on inside. All right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. So, Father Ng, I wanted to be sure I asked you about the holidays since you know Christmas is coming up pretty soon. Are there any special traditions that you and your family have for the holidays? Uh, my family always celebrates on Christmas Eve. Oh, we all come back mm -hmm. uh, from the, now it's all my brothers and sisters and now the grandkids, everybody comes back to my parents' house. Mm -hmm. My parents still live in the same house where I grew up as a kid. Nice. They've been married 66 years. So we all come back together mm -hmm. and it's always, we have mass together and then we have a party together and we have dinner, okay. gifts, the whole, it's all, that's Christmas Eve Man. every year. That sounds, that sounds awesome. As long as I can remember. Yeah, <laughs> but that's great. Yeah, I know for me, uh, we have to be here for Christmas uh, because we have basketball games. Uh, thankfully, I, my father's getting to fly out and also my sister, so I get to oh, spend really? some time with them. Yep. So you're going to have some of the family out here? I have some of the family out here. Oh, yeah. good for you. And then also some of uh, me and some of my teammates will also be spending Christmas at uh, Coach's house and just have fun with him and his little kids. So who's going to cook for the uh, Christmas dinner at the Coach's house? Uh, I got to leave that up to Coach Keaton. Yeah? Coach Keaton and his wife. He's got to feed all you guys? Yeah, he's got to feed all of us. <laughs> <laughs> They've done it all before, so they're used to it. Uh, I hope they have a very big turkey and a lot of pies. Yeah, I hope so. I hope yeah. so. Usually they're ready for us. When we get there, the food is all ready and they're oh, ready. really? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm looking forward to it. Sounds good. So, Father Ng, it's been really great interviewing you. And I have to ask my last question, the one question that I really enjoy asking other people. And that is, who do you think you look like or resemble the most? What famous person? What famous person? Yes. And before you answer that, I'll let you know that people always say that I look like 50 Cent, the rapper. Do you really? Yeah, that's what they no always kidding? say. No mm kidding? -hmm. And they've been saying that to me since I was in middle school. Really? Yep. So the question is, who do I think I look like yes. or resemble? Yes. What I'm famous gonna, person? Yeah, I think because of my smile, I'm going to say it's Magic Johnson. Magic Johnson? Yeah. yeah okay. Right. Nobody's told you that before, have no, they? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I can kind of see that because you guys both have a smile that just brights up the room when you walk in. Thank you very much. <laughs> yep. Thank you very much. No problem. Well, it's been a great interview. Yeah, I've enjoyed it, and I really appreciate you taking the time to talk with me. I just want to say happy holidays. Thank you, yep. and a and Merry I'm, Christmas to you. Thank you, and I'm really looking forward to winter quarter. Okay, All right, sounds great. Good. All right. Thank you for it. Good luck yep. this season. Appreciate it. And I realized that it was like the last time I might ever play competitive basketball again. And I'm like, hmm. I don't like the sound of that. I feel like this year will be the best year for me just taking pride in each and every game, but it being my last year. And uh, I'm going to try to get the young guys on our team on the same page.